Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 725 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Scott Bywater from Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia, one of our down under buddies. Uh, his topic is copywriting. And you regular listeners know that I've called copywriting my number one business skill in the 46 years I've been in formal business and even when I was 10 years old doing side hustles, you know, writing flyers and stuff. So so you got to listen up to this. This is serious. And, and remember another thing I've said, after making multiple eight figures with my own copywriting for myself, I still study it today because the better you get at it, the more money will pour in your front door. So make sure this is a, a one of those must-listen podcasts. All right, hope you didn't miss episode 724. That was Daniel Martinez. He's a senior, uh, a serial entrepreneur, got a, a lovely family, lifestyle business he's made for himself uh, with a very interesting real estate method that I, I haven't heard before. So check that out. That's episode 724. All right, follow me on TikTok at Digital Multimillionaire. Uh, one video I've got is going, I think, about 650,000 views so far this uh, this past week. And uh, got probably 250 short uh, training videos for you. Some of them are funny, but um, a lot of them are uh, training videos. So check that out. And make sure you pick up a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And you will thank me if you do even a portion of what's in this book. It's about a 60, 70 page book of all the techniques I use to handle up to 60,000 customers and 150,000 subscribers without pulling my hair out and with a small staff. So check it out at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And then also uh, pick up a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P and put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. All right, let's get to the main event here. Scott Bywater is a sought-after marketing copywriter and the creator of the online simple email ROI system. And, of course, you know ROI is return on investment. It's a course, and uh, over the past 21 years, he's written for gurus and leading companies, including Kerwin Ray, J. Conrad Levinson of the Gorilla Marketing fame. Uh, a lot of you have heard of that. Mercola.com. I'm not sure if they're still around or not. They they had some real uh, governmental problems, I think, but they were one of the most prolific websites in the world. And the Learning Annex, which uh, we kind of don't know if uh, Scott put him out of business or not. We'll tell him. <laughs> let him tell you about that. So, Scott, are you ready to screw? The I, I am 100% ready to screw, Tom. I'm look, looking forward to this. All right. Yeah, so... Uh, Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we're, I know it's a long way to Australia, so it was a long walk for you to, to get on here. But but uh, but you can handle it because I understand you have uh, joined a couple cults and you were living as a hippie for a while. Yeah. And now you're this big super marketing guy. What, what's all that about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when, when I was in my, um, oh, like, late teens, I was – I guess I, I guess I'm a bit of an explorer by um, by, by nature, and uh, so so I was very much into like the I guess yeah spiritual exploration and all of that sort of thing. So yeah, when I was 17, I went to a um, I went on a I think it was a seven day a seven day event, and we got there, and they literally the 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 people who were who were running the event um, I, I'll call them let's just call them the cult. Um, they went from being nice people and you got them there and they were like really serious. And then we went somewhere in a blacked out car and had to do all sorts of strange, um, yeah, strange, th yeah, like strange things over a period of seven days. Did you sacrifice any goats or anything? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't that, it wasn't that extreme, you know, it wasn't that extreme. I, I probably wasn't at, at a high enough level to, oh, get, to, okay, uh, to get to the goat to, sacrificing, yeah. <laughs> to, to get to the goat sacrificing side of things. So, so it was, uh, but yeah, I think I, like if I knew sleep deprivation at the end of that event, I don't know how much we slept, but I, I would say it was, yeah, maybe five hours, five hours over seven days. 
and, and then I did. I actually did a did a lot of research into you know, cults and sociopath, sociopathy and all of that sort of thing, which was quite um, which which was quite fascinating. And uh, and I think then that led you know like I was involved in sales and marketing for quite some time, and it led me on the you know on the copywriting path, which essentially yeah you know, in copywriting you need to really understand psychology. Uh, and you know the way people the way people think. So in many ways, it was uh, an unplanned, um, yeah, part of my uh, yeah part of my training. Well, kind of like pregnancy sometimes. Yeah, yeah so, that's right. <laughs> so, that's right. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure how much you learned studying sociopathy because you did agree to come on this show, but but yeah, we'll put that right. aside. Um, <laughs> but uh, you also went on a some kind of fast, and I, I, you know, I've been intermittent fasting, and I did a three day fast, and never done any really long ones. But uh, so what? What's that? What's a strange fast? Uh, yeah, so, so that that fast that was I mean that was that was interesting. So when I was in my late teens, I had a friend, and he went on a twenty one day fast, and and I was he was several years older than me, and I I admired him at the time and and had a lot of respect for him. Yeah, no, no, he's dead, but that's okay. Go ahead, keep that, going. That's actually that, that is actually true. Oh, oh so, my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> So and we're laughing so about it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he he um, he did this he did this fast, and it was, it was what was called a breatharian fast at the time. So I, I'm going to sound crazy. You hold your podcast, breath for 20 days. Yeah. No, no, you don't. <laughs> you, you actually don't eat or drink for seven days. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest people repeat this. And then, and then you don't eat for the further 14 days. So you literally, so literally, you should be dead within yeah. seven days. So it was, it was an interesting belief system shift, though, because we're I mean, you don't we, even drink water for seven days. Isn't that kind no, of death? Nothing. I thought nothing. you couldn't like, go. You can only go three or four days without water. That, that's what we're told. Yeah. But, okay. Um, well, he made I, it. I, yeah, but but again, I wouldn't recommend. No, you know, no, no. That's I wouldn't sure. recommend passing this advice on to your teenage, you know, to your teenage child. Um, but yeah, I, I did that. And I guess it's, um, I guess so it's always stretching the, maybe I've got a habit of stretching what, uh, going outside the box, exploring and stretching what's possible. So you did that fast after he did it? I, I did that fast after he did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you, I did it you lived, seven days, no, no food and drink and Yikes. another 14 with no drink. So wow. yeah. Did you lose any weight? I think so. I, I never really cared back then. Yeah, um, yeah. You're a skinny guy. You, you don't worry about that stuff. So, uh, so bottom line, folks, to be a really worldwide successful copywriter, you have to join at least two cults. You have to live as a hippie and fast for 21 days. There you go. <laughs> so, right. or right. or buy his AI course later. All right. So, <laughs> so yeah, well, that's the only two choices. Yeah. So. So uh, now I was looking at uh, researching you a little bit, and I noticed on the timeline you have on your website it's very cool. That's an about time on the about page is a timeline, folks. And in 2005, he listed I wrote my first book, Cash Flow Advertising, and got married to my beautiful wife. So you're a copywriter, but I, I'm not sure the order there. You should have maybe put her first. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> your book was more important than your marriage well, well, well she, she never read the book right so, 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 so it was sort of like a revenge comment you know? <laughs> okay all right now hey no, is, is mercola.com still around yeah yeah they're still they're but they, still they went through and... some really serious times for a while right oh uh, well that they've been they, they got knocked off google i yeah. think in 2019 they've had yeah they've had a lot of um as you said governmental challenges so because they they go up against a narrative right? yeah exactly so, yeah and because myself and my girlfriend and her brother we all depended on that uh for yeah. a long time for great information and not, not the mainstream stuff so um yeah you can still find them if you just go to i'm pretty sure if you just go to mccola.com because I've been writing subject lines for them for mm -hmm. maybe seventeen years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, 
It's just, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing website. I guess it got too big for its britches, and then somebody that, now they, like they actually got threatened. Yes. They actually got threatened. If if reading reading between the lines, I haven't spoken um, to them directly. Just what I've seen publicly from the um, from from McCullough's emails and that sort of thing. It was sort of like you need to you particularly during all the COVID stuff. They just couldn't keep it live. So what what they would do is they would put it out there, but then that, they'd have to get rid of it within forty eight hours. Oh, so geez. if you're on their email list, you'll still get all the content. Mm-hmm. But then they've got something. It's like a paid sort of subscription, which is like five dollars a month or something, where you um, I forget what the what the channel is, but where you can still access that oh, information. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, uh, yeah. you, you've had enormous experience with lots of different companies. Do you have any experience with for-profit schools? For-profit no, schools? No, for, F-O-R. Uh, for-profit yeah. for, for schools. Yeah, yeah. which uh, what you said is actually what most of them end up is poor-profit <laughs> schools. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably correct. But, uh, yeah, any uh, experience with them? So, so for profit is, is that like a like an education? Yes, it's a paid school for like heating, air conditioning, plumbing, uh, you know, all kinds of this nursing schools. You know, these are for profit. They're not, in other words, government backed. They're uh, or public. They're uh, individual uh, entrepreneurship things. In, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a lot in the education sector. Like, I work with a company called Knowledge Source over here. For ten years, but they're not so much in the industries you're talking about. They're like your, yeah, how to make money out of um, property development. Yeah, or, yeah, that's or yeah, stock just, trading. But it's uh, but they're a for profit company, right? They're not government uh, government entity. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, I, I ask because my school, I have the only licensed, dedicated internet and digital marketing school in the USA, probably the world. That's you know specific to that topic. And um, it's a for-profit school. And so I'm always looking for ways to reach. We have uh, students, young students that are thinking about going to regular college. And then we have older people and we have business owners that want to, you know, knock down a lot of their expenses for uh, their online presence. So always looking for angles on that. But uh, do you see any big differences in the U.S. versus the Australia market when it comes to copywriting? No, no Other than the, the, uh, some of the words you use are different than ours. Yeah, yeah, and there's minor changes, but I mean, I've been writing obviously um, quite quite extensively in the US as well as Australia, and I don't see any major difference because the whole thing is you got to be able to number one is the ability to enter the conversation going on in someone's mind, mm-hmm. and that really comes down to a down to a cultural thing. Uh, so I, I don't see Australia and US as there are cultural differences, but they're not they're not massive. Now, if I was writing for, let's say, Japan or China or those sort of cultures where I think they're they're a, you know they're much different, uh, then I think it would be an issue. But Australia, US, it's pretty. Yeah, I, I've never really faced anything other than you know. I, I still don't really know what good old boy means, you know, like <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's, uh, I was just noticing, it's kind of interesting, cultural starts with the word cult. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I think there's cults, I think there's, you know, the more, the more you, it's actually a really good distinction because the more you think about that, you see that every company is in a way its own cult, like it has a certain mm-hmm. way of, of thinking because it has a culture, right? So right. some some companies are like, you need to get in at seven and you need to finish at eight, and and some companies are, yeah, if you work past five, you're an idiot. So yeah. so it's uh yeah, it's actually a really good distinction. So uh, I'm clearly an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Entrep- yeah they say an entrepreneur will work eighteen hours a day. Uh, to get out of work in eight hours a day for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which, is, which is pretty accurate, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, so tell us about this. Um, now, I, I everybody listening here knows that I am massively uh, on email. I mean, I've had up to 150,000 subscribers in a niche market and made many, many millions of dollars with email. And, and I, I contend that 
the the big money by people at my level and your level and everybody else's is that with email and the only people that dispute that are the people that sell social media training <laughs> so yep. social media to me is a necessary evil to get them off of there onto an email list that you control but then, just because you got the the names and addresses, doesn't mean you're going to make any money unless you do what you're going to tell them. So tell them about the your ROI system. Yeah, you know, a hundred percent. And and I think it's a really good distinction because you know if you look at studies like from Litmus.com, uh, email marketing has a thirty six to one return uh, ROI, uh, which is far far greater than anything that that social mm -hmm. social media offers. Yeah. Uh, however. It doesn't get like it doesn't get Tom the the dopamine hits. So if you drop something on social media, you'll get like, you know, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 likes, whatever, and everyone's like, and you're feeling really good and you're excited. But the problem is generally there's no money in your bank account for that. Just like that, you, you that, can, that video of mine has got six hundred and forty thousand views. Not one nickel came in from that video. <laughs> wow. 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 It's, you know, that's on TikTok. It's incredible, right? Like, yeah. like you're, you're seen as a and I, I like I've got friends who are like massive influence, get millions of views on their, yeah, you know, on their socials. I'm like, man, you need to be putting those people onto an email. That's right. Yeah, um, that's absolutely because right. It it doesn't mean they're killing it, you know. Like percep it's perception versus versus reality. Uh, whereas email, I mean, I just find I did a Matt Fury course years ago. And I uh, just started doing an email a day, and I built my business based on based on email. Yep. So then, when then when uh, it came to the re the reason I decided to create that course is obviously I know how effective email marketing is. And then when AI came in, I'm like, man, this takes away like. And when I say AI, it doesn't mean you need to sound like a robot, but it takes away the two biggest things which hold people back from from writing emails. It's like. If you know how to program the AI, it'll tell you what you need to write about, which is number one. People are like, oh, what am I going to say? All of that sort of thing. You'll have a, you'll have a content, a massive content calendar uh, within a very short period of time if you know how to ask the right questions to the AI. And second, it overcomes that blink. I mean, you probably don't have it, Tom, and, and I don't so much have it, but the average person has a massive average business owner, particularly small business owner because they're busy doing everything else. They have a massive like blinking cursor syndrome often. They'll sit down and it'll take them two hours to write an email. <laughs> yeah. now, with, and this is true. Right? The more I talk to people, I'm like, it takes you two hours to write an email. And what the AI does is if you if you program it, we spend about 20 hours, right, program creating a program for the AI. So it spits out what we want it to do, meaning it enters a conversation going on in our mind and actually brings, when we write the content, it's very tailored to our target audience. It's not just vague AI generalities. Um, so, yeah, so when you do that, so literally you can whip up an email within minutes and then because it's created in like, a, it's almost like a Google Doc the way it's created, you can then go and you can add your little stories in and you can add you know, your own personality personality to it. Well, people ask me all the time, Tom, is AI going to replace you? And I say, I wish it would hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I work too hard as it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I look at I look at AI. It's a little bit like, well, as far as copy goes, anyway. It's a little bit like having a a chainsaw, right? It does. <laughs> it can yeah. speed things up. But if you don't know how to use it, you can also chop your arm off. Exactly um, right. So, so, so and you're not so, really making any cabinet, you know, nice fine uh, uh, woodworking with it. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You need the skills to be able to pull pull that off. So, so what yeah. does what does the whole system consist of? Yeah. So, so essentially, like in in like there's there's five modules. So in module one, we really deep dive into understanding the target market. So we go through, you know, the fears, the pains, the desires, beliefs, finding out what your why is, finding out what your unique selling proposition, all of this sort of thing. So we can then program the AI because you've got to, I, I, I like the saying, I once heard it, you've got to earn the right to grow a business. Um, yeah, meaning you've got to get all the systems in place. You can't just, you know, you've got to do things, do things properly. So what we're doing is we're setting the foundations 
so that you earn the right to actually be able to create AI. So in the second module, the second and third modules aren't about AI at all. They're about yeah, how do we actually close the sale of the email? So uh, the, the, se the second module is all about how do we create the right landing, yeah, the right landing pages, so we actually set up money money box calls, and we don't end up sort of like the Australian soccer team where you get it into the box all the time and you you can never thread it through the um, yeah the two upright posts. <laughs> so so that, that's the second. The third module is all about how do we actually do open loop offers, which is what you see in TV series all the time, so that so that we actually get people to make the click and we have the curiosity factor which makes that happen. And then the fourth module, we, we go right into the AI. You know, so now we've, we've really earned the right, we've set the foundation and we start, we go into, okay, how do you actually, you know, write the, you know, write the AI. Uh, and then in the fifth module, we go into subject lines and how we actually turn things into, into subject lines and the content calendar. So you can whip up, yeah, you could whip up a year's worth of emails in a day or two using the uh you know using the ai format yeah and uh <laughs> so a couple couple of things there on the last point that you just made you still got to be a little bit careful with uh doing stuff too far in advance this uh, one of my students um was uh, used the term something like a uh get yourself a flood of business in his subject line just when yep. a major major hurricane hit New Orleans <laughs> and oh man, did people like skewer him thinking that he was playing off of the, all the damage and destruction. <laughs> so he well, can... you, you never know what's around the corner, right? Particularly, <laughs> particularly today. Yeah, you know, it could be yeah. one. It could be one day to the next. So yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and I think you could. Yeah, you, know, you can. Yeah, you like you don't have to you do just it. You monitor just say, hey. a little bit, you know, and, and the, just don't set it and forget it and forget all about it. So uh, yes. give them some tips on subject lines. Uh, I tell people if you don't, if your subject line doesn't get them to open it, nothing else matters. Nothing because everything downstream, you could have the best product in the world, the kick ass sales letter, but if they don't open that email, it's uh, it's, it's done. Yeah, you yeah, know, absolutely. And and I've created literally thousands of 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 subject lines and and seen the split test results and that sort of thing over the last you know, 17 years or so. What are some of the big and, picture tips you can, you have? Yeah, so so I mean one of them, probably the most powerful powerful tip that uh, as a small business owner you can incorporate. So there's one there's one word and it's a four letter word which is the one I would suggest using whenever possible. And the reason this four letter word is so powerful is because it creates curiosity. And essentially curiosity is what gets your emails, you know, get what, what gets things open. So, so for example, Tom, if I, if I said, uh, yeah, the, the number one secret to growing a business is to work hard. Uh, yeah, that's not a very <laughs> yeah. exciting headline. Not you listen all. to it and you're like, you've given you've given it away in the yeah in the headline. But then I could I could dive deep, deeper and I could say this is the number one secret to growing your business, and that's 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 much better, better right? That's, better, that's yeah. Your curiosity. But then I could say this is the number one way to grow your, as an example, you know, to grow your uh, adult learning center. And all of a sudden, that's 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 getting more that's getting more and more specific. So we're going, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're pulling it to the specificity. So what what it is? It's a balance of between specificity and curiosity. And if you bring those two together, you get a really uh, you know, a really powerful headline. So I don't know. Can you throw a maybe a a business a business at me, and I'll 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 brainstorm a headline. Yes, yeah, so family protection dogs. Family. Oh, so these are dogs you buy that protect your family. Yep. Oh wow. That's wow. one of my so, side businesses. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. That's cool. So, so this is the best way. Uh, yeah, this is the best way to protect your family from burglars. Got it. 
No, no, yeah, no. The four you mentioned a four letter word. Is the best? Is that the word you're talking about, or what's the four letter one? Best actually isn't a bad word. Yeah. But the best, the four letter word, which most people don't guess right. And I discovered it. I actually stumbled across it because I'm doing them. I'm seeing the split test and I'm seeing this, this four letter word come out all the time. And the reason I don't just come out and say it is because it actually demonstrates how powerful the four letter word is. And I was using it right throughout that, those examples. Mm-hmm. And the four letter word is this, because what this does is it doesn't tell you what it is. But right. it incites the curiosity, and it's also not <coughs> hypey, right? It's mm-hmm. not hypey at all. And what one of the things I found later is that Buzz Sumo, and you can you can Google this. You know, if you look up Buzz Sumo best headlines, they put the AI in. I think it was over, you know, Facebook headlines or LinkedIn or or something like that. And they found that yeah. And I saw this in like a lot of the, the word this in a lot of their their best headlines mm-hmm. like one of their one of their favorite that i i remember is this will make you you know so this will make you is very powerful because it suggests there's no effort on, it's, it's curiosity plus it suggests there's no effort on your on your mm-hmm. on your um on your part so yeah this will protect your family from burglars you don't uh, even have to tell them as dogs and it it automatically goes oh how to do that and that's perfect if i mean it's it's perfect if if a suburb has just had a, a exactly of right, right 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 yeah that, that it hits a mark right time enters a conversation in their mind and will get will get some great attention yeah no we've we call that the zagarnik technique because uh the the lady that kind of invented the principle of the human mind was a, a russian psychologist bluma zagarnik and she she discovered that the trait of the human mind cannot stand unfulfilled curiosity. And that's exactly yes. what you're talking about there. In fact, when we used to do printed sales letters in a book almost, like a real long sales letter, we never ended a sentence at the bottom of the page. It always went yep. to the next page so that they had, nobody could stand not finishing that sentence and they got them to turn the page. <laughs> little things like that are so powerful and, and it's the same with your emails right like mm-hmm. like and 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 if we look at like tv shows every tv show does this you know you you go like if you're if you're watching a morning show it's like come back after the break and we'll introduce oh, you yes. to a somersaulting donkey who catches mm-hmm. chocolate bars you know? exactly like oh i got to come back after the break. <laughs> yeah, thing, it, ha- so. it happened to me one time. I was getting ready to speak in Los Angeles and I'm putting my tie on, getting ready. And on the TV, it's uh, the news came on. It said, guess who Britney Spears will tell you. Uh, Britney Spears kissed. will tell you in the next segment. And I've had two major TV news directors in my courses and they said, "Oh, we just lie to you. It ain't coming until the end of the show." But so I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, put my tie on. I'm thinking, I don't care about Britney Spears. And then I'm thinking, but I wonder who it was, <laughs> you know. And I yeah. ended up waiting till the end of the show. Almost got late to go down. That's how powerful that is. Uh, it's incredibly, it's incredibly powerful, and 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 it's why, like, even at the end of the of the emails, is having a PS to the next email. Which is exactly what they do on. I mean, if you watch any like TV series, right? It always ends on this, you know. Yeah, it's a cliffhanger. They call it cliffhanger. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It ends on this cliffhanger, and you gotta, yeah, you, know, you gotta come back tomorrow or or forward through to the next channel now that we've got Netflix or the next yeah. you know, next show now that we've got Netflix. But yeah, it keeps you constantly on the um, on the hook. Now it also increases your click through rate uh, because yes. same you know so I usually or many times I use it twice in an email the subject line to get you to open and then inside the body to get you to click through and uh, it really increases the the click through rate because and sometimes I'll experiment with you know putting all the details in the email but uh, usually the click through rate skyrockets when you put a um, uh, curiosity technique in there. Yeah, yeah, and and I think you can do it three ways. You do it in the subject line for the click, uh, and then in the PS to get them to read the next the next email. Yeah, if you have a series uh, coming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and the thing I the thing I think yeah I've always found it powerful. Like you can open the email and say, okay, today we're going to show you you know the secret to stop 
you know, to stop burglaries happening uh, to your home. And you, you give like a really useful, useful tip. Um, but then at the end of it, you say something like, yeah, but that's just one thing that you can do. The, the actual most powerful, to find out the actual most powerful thing you can do, which will, and then you insert like three benefits, mm -hmm. click here. And then it's like, oh, yeah. But, but at the same stage, you're giving them some quality information so that the next time they'll click on the next email. And that I think that's really powerful because what, what the, the studies have shown is the number one thing that people look at in an email isn't even the subject line. It's a name of the person sending. It. Oh, that's yeah. That's the number one thing that'll get you deleted instantly if they don't recognize you, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now you know the the curiosity thing even works backwards, and I do it on every episode of this podcast. So I said what this episode's about, but I also said I hope you didn't miss this other episode, and this guy's got this really cool technique, real estate that I never heard before. And then I shut up and moved on. <laughs> so, so we get people that missed some episodes to, uh, to go back uh, and pick up back episodes doing that. So, yeah, it's so, so powerful. So that, that's actually really clever. Yeah. And I think you can apply the same thing to email as well. Like, P.S., you know, here's the email I sent the other day and link them to a blog post or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it can go all different directions for sure. Uh, one of the things we do an email to get a better quality email address is we do um, an e-course as the ethical bribe, you know, freebie, rather than just a one-time download because that way, and we remind them, put in your best email address so you don't miss parts of the course. <laughs> so so we get an, a better quality uh, email because a lot of people just use throwaway emails to grab freebies and and then they never check them again. Yeah, that's that's clever. Do you find, how do you find the opt-in on the free course versus just the the free report much better. Yeah. It's ah, high, higher quality email. I, that's for me anyway. It's because everybody, everybody has to test, you know, if a guy yes. like me or you says, this is the way it has to be, put your wallet in your pocket and run because <laughs> your market will tell you which worked for your offer, your, your audience, your, you know, your product, whatever it is, service. They will tell you. So that's why. So go ahead and go into a little bit because you've done enormous amounts of split testing, way more than me. Uh, tell them about how important that is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the the thing that really hit me with with split testing was early on. I think I, I watched a Even Pagan video. Yeah. And one of the things he he uh, it was one part of his course, and he said, "Who here split tests?" And I think only three people in the yeah, split tests a lot, and only three people in the audience would have put their hand up. And he says, "What size of business do you have? What size of business do you have? What size of business do you have?" And they all had like multi-million dollar mm. enterprises. And it's probably you know, particularly if you're getting you know strong, decent amounts of of traffic, it's probably the the easiest, simplest thing you can do. To boost your, you know, to boost mm -hmm. your, you know, to boost your bottom line. Yeah, I mean, the guy, uh, the guy that taught me from his first sales letter, first draft, to his final after split testing everything on Earth. I mean, he's this guy was a fanatic. He split test a drop shadow on the edge of the sales. Letter. <laughs> I mean, this guy is crazy. But uh, his his final sales letter was nine sold nineteen times as much as his first one. Most small wow. business people pat themselves on the back if they even get one sales letter done, you know. So uh, yeah, it's extreme, extremely powerful. And in the old days, it used to take months to do a split test with direct mail, but now with uh, online stuff, you can in a matter of hours you can have a split test done. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a client where I must have done that for them for six or twelve months, and it was just a split test here, split test there. You know, add a few testimonials and see what difference that made, and and then change the opening, see what impact that made, and, and all of that. And and like they weren't always massive changes, like a, massive results. Like it wasn't like one right. yeah, adding a few headlines doubled the results, but it might have given a fifteen percent bump or a seven percent bump or an eighteen percent bump. And that compounded, if you're getting a lot of traffic, is a massive impact on your on your ROI. Yeah. So. And on, you know, and on uh, evergreen products over a period of years, it can add up to enormous amounts of money. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I would, I'd encourage anyone like having a just, and it doesn't need to be that complex. It's just like, okay, we're going to do one split. You set up a an SOP. We're going to do one split test a month, and tell them what an SOP know, is. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, standard operating procedure. So, so you, which is basically you just document exactly what you do to do a uh, to do a split test. Yeah, because if you uh, forget, so, you wasted the whole thing. <laughs> forget what you changed. <laughs> yeah, because I, I only started to do standard operating procedures properly in the last twelve months, and even if you're just doing them yourself, like the whole idea is you you do it and then you can get your team to do everything and and it's all standardized and that sort of thing. But even if you're just doing it yourself, you'd be amazed. Something you did a month ago, you've forgotten when you go back to do it. So it it lowers a lowers a cognitive cognitive load. And I think for split testing, I mean, you do it and you just say, okay, the first Tuesday of every month, I am going to do a split test, and this is a process that that I follow. And then you just you just do it. And if you're getting decent traffic, I think it's. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't see how you would you would ever lose. Uh, over the long term, if you follow that process, yeah, especially if you're doing my, minor changes, but but it's it's you just uh, people have to realize they just can't trust what they think as the marketer. The, the yes, the the market is always going to tell you. So, for instance, this uh, the other guy that was one of my uh, early mentors, he had this beautiful testimonial down near his call to action, and it was really nice. So he thought, you know, if I move this up near the top and that'll suck them in deeper to read the rest of the letter. So he moved it up to the top and result and his uh, conversion went down by 35%. And so he moved it back to the bottom and it went back up to normal. <laughs> so uh, you just, you can't, you have to just try and, and trust the numbers, not your gut feeling most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's like a it's like a science, right? Mm -hmm. and, and just like science, the science is never actually settled, right? So you you go and you go, okay, I've got this amazing, web, you know, like this amazing uh, sales page, for instance, or whatever it is, webinar funnel, or whatever you've got in place. But and you go, and then you think, oh, you know what? If I change it with this offer, it's going to kill it. And I did that once, and uh, I didn't split test it. And it sunk my results. Mm -hmm. And then I changed it back and the results went back up again. So it's it's very, very, uh, yeah. So, so the answer is, as you said, just whatever you do, split test it, measure the results because you don't, yeah, only the market knows what's right or wrong. Yeah. You and I really, no matter how much experience we've got, we just we just don't know how much, how the market is going to respond. Yeah, this guy, this guy said, you know, uh, online sales is just a simple math problem. He said, you do something and count the results. And then you do something else and count the results. Whichever one gets more results, do that. <laughs> you know, it's pretty simple. It, yeah, and, and even if you do a split test and it drops right, if you're monitoring that, you know pretty soon, mm -hmm. okay, results, dro results drop by 15%. We switch it back, uh, and you might lose. Yeah, you might lose money over, let's say, a four-week period or a two-week period or, or whatever. But if they jump by fifteen percent, well, then you can leverage that over a twelve months, twenty-four, thirty-six month period uh, over that period of time. So it, it it changes everything. Yeah, the upside is is way more important. But but one thing people have to understand is they have to uh, not just count clicks. See, there's there's click trackers out there that'll tell you, okay, more people clicked on this than clicked on that, but they don't track them all the way through to see if the person bought. So you could have a click that 500 people clicked and nobody buys, and you could have another thing that 20 people clicked and 10 people purchased. So you can't just go with click trackers. It has to be actual uh, split testing stuff that tracks them all the way through to see if they bought stuff. Yeah, yeah, and you see that you see that often where it's it's sort of short term testing or or late or probably lazy testing, right? Oh, that one got a this percent better click through rate. Yeah, that that's good, but does you know does that equate to the bottom line? Yeah, and see the um, the, the problem with that is if they if they kept the one that got five hundred clicks but no sales because they said oh five hundred clicks, the, and 
and they could only afford like one ad, they would throw away the good ad and keep the bad ad right? because the, the, they didn't know that the other ad was bringing the customers. So very, very important. What, what do you use to do your split testing? Yeah, so 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 in terms of um, yeah, in terms of split testing, one of the things I've done with, I mean, probably the most split testing I've done is with the with the subject lines, where I where I do with a, a client who has a list of about two million people, mm -hmm. and they will come back and they will basically say, yeah, this got this many, yeah, this got this many results. This got this many results. This got this many results, and you can actually see, you know, which words, which subject lines, all of that sort of thing, is actually getting, you know, by far and above the best, yeah, you know, the best return on in, you know, return on investment. So you design the thing, and then they, it's their, they have to implement it with their software and stuff. Yeah, so they're implementing it on their end okay, with their software. I see. And seeing the seeing that, and that they will measure. They probably don't. They don't give us data anyway, but they will give us data on open rate, and then they'll give us data on the people who clicked on the specific, um, you know, on the specific link. But we don't get the data on whether they get the data on sales or not. I'm not sure, but we don't get the data on sales. But I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Um, and that's that's been very very insightful over the years, just to see exactly yeah you know, exactly how they yeah you know, how they do that. Yeah. So yeah, with us, we use uh, it's a thing I've been promoting for twenty years and use myself Kickstart Cart, which is a shopping cart email system. It's everything is combined, and it's got a a split testing module that takes me ten minutes to show somebody how to use it, and it can mean millions of dollars to them over time. Just you know, you just put sales letter A, sales letter B, and uh, the first person goes to sales letter A, second goes to B, and it alternates them and count and tracks them all the way to see if they bought or not. You know, so uh, very. It's, it's it's not hard to do what we're talking about, folks. That's what I'm getting to. So and, we, and how how deep does it go, Kickstart Cart? Like, can you tell? Like it, it tracks them right through to the sales process. Yeah. Can it track? Can it track which emails they clicked on? Like, yep. let's say I've been on your email sequence for a period of time, and I've can it say, oh, they clicked on these five emails and this impacted yes. it and that sort of thing. You could, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's a and it's fairly well, inexpensive wow, no, system. Great. Well, it's a fairly inexpensive system. I mean, there's places like we used to call Confusion Soft. You know, that's you know, $400 a month or something and thousands of dollars for training that's more sophisticated, but mine will do 90% of it for a fourth of the price and uh, a simple, you know, a mere mortal can operate it, you know, so it would be a little harder to set up, but still way, way cheaper and less risky. So, so it's a, a bargain basement, super powerful shopping system. Yeah. That that's what you want. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, one of the big problems I see with all the people I help is that you know they overspend on stuff. You know they don't know any better, and and people that all these sales organizations will sell you anything, and you know you don't even know if you need it or not. All right, we got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we'll ask uh, Scott. Uh, what a typical day looks like for him and his business, and uh, he's got a pretty cool freebie for you, and he'll tell you about his course. So, folks, about 25 years ago or so, I kind of turned the internet marketing guru world on its head, and the people at my level were charging 50 or 100 grand up front to uh, tell you what they knew about internet marketing. And I knew a lot of these guys; they'd be they'd be hiding out in Wulagong or Wulagong if you if you gave them 50 grand and they'd never help you. So I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna." Make them mad, but I'm going to take care of small business people. So I, I charged about a 10% of that as an entry fee, and then I tied my success to your success. So for me to get my 50 grand, you have to net 200 grand. Well, people kind of like this, and they knew I wouldn't disappear on them. And here I am 25 years later sitting here helping people. Uh, we've had 1,800 high-level students and tens of thousands of people in the seminars. And um, uh, it's the most uh, the longest running, most unique, most powerful uh, and successful internet and digital marketing program ever, uh, mentor program ever. And I, I have no trouble saying that because I, I dare people to put their program up against mine and 
they won't do it because they're they'd be embarrassed because I'm a crazy fanatic. I accidentally threw a tell us a seminar on Thanksgiving one time. <laughs> I didn't I didn't notice it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> Made four thousand bucks that night for all the people that didn't want to see their uncle screaming at the football teams on TV. So it's uh, all one on one. We don't do any group stuff here. I don't want to lump you in with people more advanced or less advanced. You have an immersion weekend in this giant retreat center here in Virginia Beach. You actually live in the house with me, and we have a TV studio uh, next door where we shoot your marketing videos for you. And we also get a scholarship to our uh, school, which you can either use yourself or gift to somebody. Now, I'm a college graduate and I believe in education, but when I went to college, you actually learned something. Nowadays, uh, well, I guess you do learn how to protest. That's about it. And then you have giant debt and you have, uh, you're have you qualified to compete for jobs at the coffee shop. So uh, that's not the way my school is. You have an actual highly in-demand marketable skill. So check it out at uh, uh, greatinternetmarketingtraining.com for my mentor program. And if you just want the school straight away or does it be a great legacy gift for a child or a grandchild, it's one of the best things you could ever give them, uh, check it out at imtcva.org. All right, let's get back to the main event. we got Scott Bywater here, and he's a uh, really highly credentialed copywriter, which everybody knows that that's uh, – you know, it's so important. If there was one skill in my entire career that's that's the most important, this is it. And it's not just written stuff. I mean, uh, I think Scott will agree with this. When you learn the techniques of copywriting, it invades all your writing and your videos and your when you talk on the phone because uh, – and you don't have to be a big jerk about it. I mean, you can have real pushy copy and you can have very subtle copy. So so I hope you agree with that, Scott. Um but uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, tell them uh, what's a typical day look like for you. Do you get up early? Do you have a morning routine? You know, do you work out? What do you eat? What's what's it like for your uh, your lifestyle business? Yeah, no, great, great, great question, uh, Tom. So my typical day basically, I wake up at five thirty. Uh, now I used to. I've recently done Craig Ballantyne's. Uh, I think he calls it. The, I don't know whether he calls it the Miracle Morning or it's about how to set up set up your morning. So I used to go and do the yeah, meditation, the exercise, all that sort of thing straight off the bat. Uh, but now what I do is I basically get up and I get that most important thing done uh, before literally looking to do to get that done before 7.30. Uh, from 7.30 till 9 is when I now do, you know, I'll go out and I'll do my, you know, I'll do my exercise, I'll do my meditation, have the cold shower, all of that sort of thing. And then I'll go back for for round two, and so round in round two, it's it, it it really depends. I mean, if I've got meetings, I'll be doing them, uh, but I try and keep the mornings as much as possible, uh, really focused on my you know my focus work. So you know that'll generally be you know client copy, and that's a, that sort of thing between that you know, nine a.m. and lunchtime. Then I'll have then I have lunch. I typically like I work from home. So I like to get out during lunch and I'll go down the Botanic Gardens, have a, I gave a coffee two years ago. Uh, I think it was two years ago about that. And so I'll go down there, have a turmeric latte, walk around. Uh, I'm a big believer in grounding, sunshine, all of that sort of thing. So I try and integrate that into my day as as much as possible. Uh, and also do a bit of eye sunning. I don't know if you ever heard of that, Tom, but no. that basically... Basically, I, I read a book from a guy. I, I don't have the name of the book handy, um, but he was like, like legally blind, right? And he reversed it. So, and one of the strategies, he's got a number of strategies, but one of them was he recommended was to look up at the sun, but with your eyes closed. And so I've started to do that. And and from every, I haven't had it tested, but I believe my eyesight has has improved considerably since I did that. So I try and integrate all of these all of these stack as many habits into my day as much as possible, just because you know, if you do that, then you're you know, like, like I'm selling, essentially I'm selling my mind, right? So I need to keep my mind sharp, which makes it a much, a much more valuable, you know, a valuable asset. So the exercise, the, you know, the, the, the grounding, the, all of those, uh, you know, the cold showers, all of that sort of thing. 
I, I look at myself as a bit of a as a bit of an athlete uh, in terms of in terms of of doing that. Uh, and then really the afternoon is probably I mean the afternoon I will I will lag a little bit like in terms of energy levels and that sort of thing. So that's when I prefer to have you know my meetings and that sort of thing where I don't need to be quite as sharp as when I'm writing like a high level high level copy. And then I'll close off the day with a you know, I've got a, pro, a standard operating procedure again to close off the day where I'll set up my next day including you know I'll schedule it into like uh into into a calendar set the priorities and as well as that I'll I'll you know reply to any emails and try to get my inbox to as close to inbox zero as as possible uh, and then from there I generally go to the gym with my son if he's um if he's doing the gym that day relax go to bed and repeat the cycle all over again there you go well you got it down man I'll tell you. So, so tell them about. Um, you said you had a freebie for them. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're interested in the uh, yeah in in doing emails with AI, I've got a something called the Ultimate AI Writing Cheat Sheet. And and within that cheat sheet, you're going to find you know, five Jack in the Box openers designed to grab your reader's attention and draw them into your message. Uh, five solution prompts which get to the heart of what you're trying to sh- say and show the reader how you can solve their specific problems, and three powerful commands to write compelling subject lines that actually boost your open rates. Uh, And if you go to simpleemailroi.com forward slash AI, uh, you'll be able to download that free of charge, and you'll be amazed once you start using this how quickly you can start to whip up emails. Beautiful, beautiful. So it's simpleemailroi.com slash AI. That'll be in the show notes. And uh, tell them um, about your uh, your your super course. Yeah, so so the, the super course which we touched on earlier with the you know with the five you know the five modules uh is and what what this is is it basically shows you how to write really compelling emails via AI and to write them super fast. Like you'll 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 be able to write them literally within a matter of minutes but also be able to add your personality in because you you don't want to sound you know, like a robot, but it'll give you the structure and it'll help overcome the two problems. Number one problem is I don't know what to write about. You'll be able to create, you'll never have this problem again once you know how to use AI in the right way. And number two, you know, I'm staring at a blinking cursor and I just don't know what to write. Uh, so it's going to overcome those problems, but also make your emails super unique and super tailored to your target market. So you're entering the conversation going on in their mind. And you'll find that course at simpleemailroi.com. Yeah, so that would just not have the forward slash AI on the end, folks. And uh, yep. and the only thing you got to worry about is like that one reporter, his, his AI uh, fell in love with him, tried to get him to leave his wife. <laughs> Did you read about that? <laughs> So be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that that the future is going to be uh, is going to be interesting, right? With yeah. all that, um, yeah, the meta and the, all, all of the things that are that, that are happening at the moment. Yeah. With, so with dis- AI. disclaimer: if you get divorced over this episode, it's not Scott or my fault. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on, man. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been it's been a lot of fun, Tom. I, I've uh, I've had a great time, and there was some. So, um, yeah, you, you've asked some great questions. And, yeah, thank, thanks thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, folks, uh, hit simple email, roi.com. You can check out the big course and then put a slash AI for that freebie. All right, we'll catch everybody on the next episode. See you later.